Hey there people, so today I am going to be giving you a guide for Terraria on how to get all of the NPCs. As you can see, I've prepared my whole little NPC village as per my NPC housing guide uh, last week. And so I'm going to be going through the list of every NPC in the game and also the move-in requirements to get them. So first of all, I am going to put this 50 silver in my uh, money because that is going to be a requirement for one of them. I'll get to that in a second. So. Uh, the first NPC you're going to get is, is, of course, the guide who spawns in the game with you. Um, he, of course, gives you advice on crafting and uh, supplies and tips and that kind of stuff. So that's the guide. The second one that you're going to get is going to be the merchant. And that's why I just put the 50 silver. <laughs> I've been storing up um, some of the requirements, some of the stuff I need to spawn the NPCs in some of these chests. And uh, as much as possible, I'm going to try to show you um, me actually meeting the requirements and spawning these NPCs uh, in real time. I'm probably not going to be able to do that for all of them because there are time constraints. But uh, how it works is that once you meet the requirements, it takes about two minutes for the NPC to spawn. And that's uh, they'll only spawn one at a time. So if you're spawning more than one, it's going to be two minutes in between. Uh, that's two minutes of real time, which is uh, two hours of game time. You can see I've got the clock over here to show me the game time. I'm using a platinum watch, so I have uh, the exact time. Um, so the merchant, you need 50 silver, and that's among all the players. If you're playing in multiplayer, uh, it will, um, yeah, see, we're, there we go. So I've got Finn the merchant has just arrived. Uh, so it's 50 silver among all the players in the game. So if you're playing multiplayer, you can have a combined 50 silver in total uh, to get that. Um, so there's our merchant, and uh, next one is going to be, the merchant of course will sell you basic supplies. Uh, he's a shop, you just go talk to him, hit shop, and uh, he'll sell you some of the basic supplies and you can sell stuff back to him that you don't need anymore. Next one I'm gonna get is the uh, nurse. And so the nurse, you need at least one player in the game, of course if you're single player, that's you, <laughs> to have more than 100 health, which means you need to find one of those uh, heart crystals underground, a life crystal, and you need to mine that and use it. So another two minutes and I will have the nurse spawn in here as well. Uh, another thing worth noting that they will um, use whatever house is available. So if you have a village like this, they'll use these houses, but they'll also use underground houses. Like uh, I've got a couple houses under a couple of the trees. Um, so they will use those if you have a light source in them because they come with furniture and all that, but they do need a light source. Again, requirements for the houses. I covered that in my episode last week. Uh, they'll also use those houses up on the sky islands um, if you put a light source in one of those because again, they meet all the other requirements. Uh, for, they will not, however, use those underground houses that you find when you're mining underground, um, but that's good to know. So the nurse uh, will heal you when um, you go and talk to her. She'll give you the option to heal for a certain amount of money that will also remove any debuffs that may have been applied. And uh, so that's what the nurse is for. She should be showing up sh shortly. And uh, I'm going to just cut past that uh, afterwards to show you the next one. And there she is, <laughs> the nurse has shown up. And you notice they will spawn generally just off the edge of the screen. Um, assuming that they do in fact spawn to your actual village. Again, I'm actually gonna go and wreck up those other houses to make sure that they don't spawn underground so we can actually see them spawning in the village. But they'll generally spawn right off the edge of the screen. And another thing you can notice here is that when you have at least three, you will no longer have enemies spawn in that village area. So uh, next one we're gonna do is the demolitionist. So uh, nurse and demolitionist actually, in addition to uh, you need the life crystal uh, over 100 health to get the nurse, you also need the merchant to be present first. So you're gonna need to get that merchant, the 50 silver, get the merchant to spawn, and then you can spawn the nurse and the demolitionist counts the same way. Uh, you will need the merchant present first, and then you just need an explosive in your inventory. The grenades will work, bombs will work, dynamite will work, um, among a few other things. So another couple minutes we'll have him. In the meantime, I'm going to go uh, make sure that he's going to spawn here. And here we are. The demolitionist has just spawned just off the edge of the screen here. He will, of course, sell you explosives and uh, similar equipment. Again, you just talk to him, use the shop. 
Um, and the next one that I'm going to do is actually going to be the die trader. So to get the die trader, um, you will need one of two possible uh, options, actually. So one is that you defeat uh, one of the bosses, which is um, either the Eye of Cthulhu, the Eater of Worlds, the Brain of Cthulhu, or Skeletron, any one of those bosses, and have one die crafting material. Other option is just to find one strange plant. So uh, this happens to be a strange plant. They're not always purple, but uh, <laughs> that is one type of strange plant. There are various types. Um, so one strange plant, and he will spawn as well. Another thing worth noting, of course, uh, as long as you're not on mobile, actually, for some reason you don't have access to this on mobile, but if you're on any of the other platforms, you have a housing menu and you can assign where you want them all to be. Um, so you can see I have a whole bunch of houses ready for all these guys, uh, but they've just chosen them at random. I can reassign them if I want to. And again, it takes two minutes in between spawning each uh, NPC. They will also only spawn during daytime hours. They will not spawn at night. Uh, but if you meet the requirements, they will spawn uh, early in the morning. I think it is actually two minutes after morning begins that they will begin to spawn as well. Um, <laughs> there's the funny quack. All right, so uh, yeah, the die trader will show up in a minute and we'll just cut to that. And there he is, die trader has arrived and he just showed up off the edge of the screen. The die trader will sell you the die that, which you can use to craft dies from uh, die making things. Like uh, for instance, there are a lot of uh, flowers. I think I've got a, I thought I had a yellow marigold here somewhere, but anyway. Um, oh yeah, it's in my inventory already. So yeah, there are various um, flowers and beetle husks and things you can use to make dyes. You buy the dye vat and you can turn those into dyes. He will also give you rewards. Like I can go and talk to him right now and sell him this strange plant actually. He'll give me the reward is a dye. <laughs> and there you go, that's the, uh, the dye trader. So uh, I'm gonna do, the two next ones are gonna be the Dryad and the Angler. Uh, the Angler I actually have to go find. He'll be sleeping near the ocean. Um, and I think I'm going to go do that first if I have time. Okay, I wasn't sure if this was going to work, but here we are. Um, I have found the Angler actually. He's right there. He's sleeping on the surface. And that is how you will find him. It is nighttime, so he will spawn at night apparently. <laughs> and you just need to basically go up to him and talk to him. And there you go, he gives you fishing quests. And uh, yeah, he's gonna make his way back to base. Um, and he gives you the daily fishing quests that start at you know 4.30 in the morning when the day begins. So there we are, here's our village at night. We've got uh, Jacob the guide, Kayla the nurse, uh, Belden the demolitionist, we've got Finn the merchant, and Yal Milk, yeah, Yal Milk, <laughs> the uh, die trader, and our angler is gonna join us when he gets here. Um, Speaking of which, uh, the NPCs, when they spawn, if um, they spawn off screen, like if you're away from your NPC village when you meet the requirements and they go ahead and spawn, they will spawn into their houses. Otherwise, uh, uh, just off the edge of the screen if you're near the village, as uh, you noticed. Of course, the ones that you find, it's a different matter. Um, they will be where you found them, but they still will assign, uh, have a house assigned to them. So you will notice... Um, there we go. Grayson the angler now has a house here and sooner or later he will show up in that house. Now uh, the next thing I'm going to need to do actually is to fight a uh, boss to get the dryad. So um, the dryad, you need to defeat any boss other than King Slime, Lepus, or the Wall of Flesh. Uh, she will sell nature, corruption, crimson items and report the percentage of corruption, crimson, or hallow in the world. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and fight the Eye of Cthulhu, and uh, then we will cut to her arriving in the morning. Okay, and there we are. Elysia the Dryad has shown up. She just spawned off the edge of the screen. So sure enough, I defeated the Eye of Cthulhu. That's the easiest one. Uh, but really, any boss, again, other than King Slime, Lepus, or the Wall of Flesh, and the Dryad will come. Uh, she sells the nature-themed stuff and tells you about and sells Crimson Corruption stuff. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's now seven, which means in another two minutes, you notice the time as well. She spawned actually a little after 6.30 a.m. because the day technically starts at 4.30, but it will be another two minutes before any NPCs will spawn. Uh, and then, uh, I guess there's a little randomness there as well because it was a little after 6.30 a.m. that she spawned. 
Now you notice um, when we add these up, we've got seven. And if we've got seven, that's enough for the painter to spawn. So he should be spawning, um, I guess, a little after 8.30, around 9 maybe. Uh, we should be getting the painter as well. I'll just cut to that. And there we are, Guido the painter has arrived just after 8.30 as predicted. So uh, sure enough, about two minutes in between, and uh, on this rainy day in my NPC village, we now have eight of the NPCs. We're going to keep going. Um, the rest are going to be a little bit more complicated. Now, as far as the painter, he will sell you, uh, of course, paint, painting supplies, and paintings. So uh, he'll sell you all of those you need. Uh, as implied there, you need at least seven other NPCs present, only the town NPCs who will live in, in the houses, and uh, also the traveling merchant will actually count to that. So if you're lucky, you can get them with six, and uh, the traveling merchant will show up actually any time after you have at least, um, yeah, I think it's three. <laughs> Oh, no, actually two. Once you have two town NPCs present, which, uh, you know, the guide and one other one, presumably, um, Traveling Merchant has a 22% chance of showing up each morning after that point, and uh, we'll show him whenever it is that he does show up. In the meantime, I've got some things to do to get the other ones, so I'm going to show you those when I find them or when I spawn them, and then I'll tell you about the conditions that I had to meet to do it. Okay, so I've made my way down to the corruption, and I was looking for exactly what you can see down here, a shadow orb. A crimson heart will also work. Um, you're going to want to smash one of these probably because, uh, well, for one thing, you're going to need it later for the goblin tinkerer because to get the goblin tinkerer, you need to defeat a goblin army, and goblin armies only come after you smash one of these, or a crimson heart. Um, but this is also an easy way to get a gun, and you're going to need either a gun or a... Uh, or some bullets, <laughs> um, either a gun that uses bullets or just some bullets in your inventory. That's the requirement to get the arms dealer. So uh, I will now warp back to my base. Uh, but there you go. I've got I've got a ton of stuff in my inventory. But uh, you need either a gun that fires bullets or some bullets, and that's the requirement for your arms dealer. Now your arms dealer will not show up if you get flares. Flares do not count. It has to be a gun firing. Uh, bullets or bullets for such a gun. So my arms dealer should be showing up now shortly. There we are, <laughs> right on time. Uh, Trayvon the arms dealer has shown up, joined the village. So uh, there's that and I'm also going to uh, get a goblin army at some point. There's a random chance of getting a goblin army but I need to defeat a goblin army in order to get the goblin tinkerer. And then I need to find him, but uh, we'll get to that. The arms dealer will sell, of course, guns and uh, gun parts and bullets for guns. Um, it's pretty basic stuff, but the mini shark, of course, is very important early in the game, so you're going to want to get him early, as I did. And uh, we'll move on to whoever's next. Okay, so at this point, I've made my way to the dungeon, where you will meet the old man. And the old man is uh, not a village... Uh, character of village NPC yet uh, what you need to do is at night you will talk to the old man he spawns at the dungeon at the beginning of the world when you talk to him if you curse him at night he will transform into Skeletron and once you defeat Skeletron the old man actually turns into the clothier NPC who will sell you vanity clothing and items and he'll uh, move in the next day after you defeat Skeletron, because Skeletron you have to defeat at night after 7.30. So I'm going to do that, and that will also unlock the uh, ability to unlock one other NPC, which is the mechanic who you will then find in the dungeon. So I will show you those both. And as promised, here's Lloyd the Clothier, no longer a cursed old man in rags at the entrance to the dungeon. I defeated Skeletron, removed the curse, and he's now a productive member of our NPC village, selling... Vanity, clothing, and items. Now, I do need, still need to uh, find the mechanic. She will be bound up in the dungeon. Very important NPC, actually. My dungeon happens to be huge, so I'll cut to that as soon as I find her. Okay, so I found my mechanic right here. So I've talked to her, and I'm going to get out of here because it's a, still a dangerous place, and I don't have that good of equipment. But yes, as you can see, the mechanic is bound in the dungeon, and you will find that she will sell you some really important equipment like wires, wrenches, wire cutters, uh, the mechanical lens, all stuff that will be really helpful 
in terms of crafting mechanisms as well as uh, viewing and dealing with traps in the game. So uh, one more thing I want to do is go find the stylist who will be in a um, spider cave and then I'm just going to probably go into my uh, existing world and show you the rest from there. Okay, and here we are in a big <laughs> spider nest and uh, strangely enough, maybe you can see here, but we've got the stylist all bundled up in the bottom of a spider cave. And that is how you will find the stylist. Again, you just uh, need to talk to her and she can help you out with your hairstyle. <laughs> and dyeing your hair and stuff like that as well as just cosmetics for the hair. Uh, sells hair dyes. Um, yeah, so there's the stylist and that's how you find her. Okay, so here we're back in the world that you may be more familiar with from my other videos. Um, and I almost forgot to mention that the life form analyzer that you get from the traveling merchant, uh, again, the traveling merchant has a rotating random selection of items. He has a 22% chance of showing up each morning. So I wasn't lucky enough to get him in the, uh, the new world there yet. Uh, so I'm not actually going to show you him, but uh, you've seen him probably in my other videos and, uh, and you get the idea. He's a guy with a blue hat with a little feather in it. And he, uh, it's actually different names. So technically you could say there are different traveling merchants, but he'll have a random selection when he shows up. He'll show up randomly in the morning between 4.30 and 12 a.m. Uh, well, 12 becomes PM, but uh, once at least two town NPCs are present, he's a random selection of items. And if you're lucky enough to get the life form analyzer, you can use that to help you find uh, characters that need to be found in the world. Most of them will show up on the life form analyzer, including the mechanic, the uh, stylist, the goblin tinkerer, and the one I'm about to tell you uh, about right now, which actually is PC only for the time being with the 1.3 update coming to uh, Xbox One, PS4 soon and so on. Uh, that's the Tavern Keep. So he's the one that will uh, help you initiate and play through and uh, get rewards from the Dungeon Defenders 2 crossover event. Uh, the Etheria or yeah, Eternia Crystal, that's the one. <laughs> and uh, you will find him in the world after you've defeated either the Eater of Worlds or the Brain of Cthulhu. He'll basically be sleeping on the ground and you'll need to wake him up. Again, he will show up on that life form analyzer as well. Um, now, one that I've mentioned a lot is the Goblin Tinkerer. He's over here. He's the green guy down here. You know, looks like a goblin. Again, you need to um, defeat a goblin army. And then after you defeat a goblin army... Um, You'll find him underground, generally in the cavern layer. The uh, tavern keep will show up basically anywhere in the world, uh, whereas the goblin tinkerer specifically tends to be in the cavern layer of the world. Both of them will show up on the life form analyzer if you have it. Goblin Tinker here, he sells you items such as the ruler so that you can measure when you're building. He also sells the ever useful Tinkerer's Workshop, which is very, very handy to combine your uh, accessories into uh, more powerful versions that only take up one slot instead of, you know, however many it was that you combined. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, he is very, very useful. He also reforges items for you. So you can uh, take an item that maybe has a not very good prefix and you can go and reforge it, pay him some money to uh, turn it into hopefully a better one and you can pay him a lot of money to eventually get exactly the prefix you want. <laughs> um, so there's actually only two more uh, pre-hard mode NPCs that I still have to show you. Um, I'm going to show you the party girl because she's right over here. The party girl will show up um, when you have enough NPCs. She's kind of meant to be the last one before you go into hard mode. Um, if you're not on PC, if you don't have the 1.3 update, again, this will probably change for the other platforms soon, but uh, you'll just need eight NPCs. So we passed that threshold quite a while ago. <laughs> if you're on uh, PC, the 1.3 update, other platforms, presumably once that takes effect, uh, it's actually 13 NPCs present. And then it's actually after you have the whichever number of NPCs present, it's a one in 40 chance each day that she'll actually show up. So that's the party girl. She uh, basically sells you festive novelty items and furniture. Um, and of course, you know, that goes along with your NPCs throwing random parties. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, you can get your like, fireworks and that kind of stuff from her. And uh, yeah, you need to have that threshold. And the again, the uh, traveling merchant will actually count towards that as well. 
Okay, so I've now made my way over to the jungle because the other, uh, the last pre-hard mode NPC that you can get uh, before defeating the Wall of Flesh is the Witch Doctor. And I have left him sitting here in a house all alone in the jungle for a very, very long time <laughs> because uh, actually he will sell some special items if you put him in a house in the jungle and particularly if you uh, talk to him at night. So the Witch Doctor you get by defeating the Queen Bee, which again happens in the jungle underground. You'll find the uh, hives there and you can fight the Queen Bee once you defeat her. Um, the Witch Doctor will show up and if you have a house available. And then uh, again, if you put him in a house in the jungle, he'll give you some extra items. But basically, he sells uh, things including the imbuing station so you can make flasks for your melee weapons. And he also sells summoner related equipment like the... Uh, I think Tiki staff or something. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, he'll he'll give you a lot of stuff that's very useful if you're playing as a summoner, and he'll give you other stuff as well. As you can see, uh, you know, a bunch of stuff here: blowgun, imbuing station, bewitching table, so you can have more minions, uh, vial of venom, leaf wings. If you're in, once you're in uh, hard mode, you can get those from him at night in the jungle only, which is why he's here. So let's go back to uh, main base, and I'll tell you about some other people. Okay, so actually I've made my way to uh, the house by the ocean on the far end of the world because I forgot that I left Magius the wizard way over here. I didn't build enough houses in this world uh, at the actual village. And uh, yeah, Magius the wizard is actually the first guy that you're probably going to get, easiest guy to get once you're in hard mode after you've defeated the wall of flesh. Because again, he's just one that you're going to find um, sitting underground, basically. You'll find him... Uh, bound up in the cavern layer, much like the Goblin Tinkerer, uh, but only after you've defeated the Wall of Flesh. And he, of course, sells various magic-related items, such as the Crystal Ball, which is a particularly useful one if you're playing as a mage. Now let's make our way back to the main base again, and I'll talk to you about a few more. So the other one that's pretty easy to get, um, actually there's a couple that are pretty easy to get once you just get into hard mode, the Tax Collector, again, this one actually is PC only for now. It's 1.3 update onward. Uh, again, we'll be coming to other platforms. But basically, you'll see there are these um, lost, uh, sorry, tortured souls in the underworld. And so you can actually theoretically get this like right after you defeat the Wall of Flesh. If you happen to have some purification powder on hand, you'll see these tortured souls start appearing um, in the underworld, aka hell. And uh, they'll be wandering around. They look kind of like this guy, <laughs> um, except a little more dead or something like that, or undead, if you will. And you just throw some purification powder on one of them, and he'll become the tax collector, and he'll move into your village. And basically, he will just uh, get you some money for each, each NPC that you have. And you can talk to him every once in a while, like this, and say, collect. And you get a little cash, because he literally collects um, taxes, so-called, from the NPCs. He basically collects a certain amount of money over time, and uh, you can come and collect it every so often. Another one that's actually relatively easy to get uh, right near the beginning of hard mode is the truffle, actually. Um, you need to create a surface mushroom biome, which, again, I have a whole video on doing that, creating the, the biome and uh, getting the truffle NPC specifically, but um, this is the truffle. Mine's named Porcini, and uh, you basically just need a big enough space of mud, plant it with some mushroom grass seeds, which you'll get from uh, harvesting mushrooms in an underground mushroom biome. It's got to be above zero elevation, again, surface, and you have to have a house in that area, and then you'll get your truffle NPC. Now, he gives you a bunch of interesting stuff. Um, and there are certain things that are released in his shop as you get a little further and get a little further in the game, particularly the mushroom spear. Um, I think you have to defeat a mechanical boss to get that, but that's a pretty powerful weapon fairly early in hard mode. And also later, it's very important uh, if you want to get any of the... Um, if you want to get any of the Shroomite equipment, um, the Shroomite armor set, which is for ranged players, uh, gun toters and arrow users and rocket firers, <laughs> the Shroomite set or the uh, hoverboard or the Shroomart Shroomite digging claw, you need to buy the auto hammer from him, which you can only get after, uh, I believe, after defeating Plantera. 
So, moving right along, uh, probably the next one you're likely to get is the pirate, which you get from defeating a pirate invasion. So, uh, it's basically the pirate captain. He literally looks like the pirate captain during the invasion, but once you defeat a pirate invasion, he'll move into a house if you have a house free, and uh, he'll bas basically be on your team. He sells you um, a cannon, which is can be very useful, and other pirate-themed stuff. And then after that, or around that time, um, again, speaking of defeating bosses, once you defeat one of the mechanical bosses, that's either uh, the Destroyer, the Twins, or Skeletron Prime, that's when you get the Steampunker. And the Steampunker, again, very, very useful, kind of like almost an evolved version of the mechanic. She's the one that will sell you the Teleporter, particularly, uh, conveyor belts, you can get the Steampunk wings. So very useful stuff there. Uh, I'm just going to cut for a second because I have a solar eclipse happening. Okay, can you believe I had two solar eclipses and then a blood moon all in a row? But anyway, we have just three NPCs left to talk about. First of all, over here I have my friend, the cyborg. He will appear once you've defeated Plantera. He'll move into a house if you have one available. And uh, he sells rockets. Uh, grenade launcher, nanites, and other high-tech stuff. So, uh, there we go. Oh, sorry, proximity mine launcher, which is a lot of fun, of course. You can time those. And nanites will inflict confusion on your enemies. And high-tech vanity sunglasses. Anyway, he will move in after you have defeated Plantera. That's the uh, last boss that's really going to um, bring an NPC into the game for you. Uh, another one that we haven't talked about, actually, is the Skeleton Merchant. He is not a town NPC. He will not move into a house, but you can find him sort of like the Traveling Merchant, except that you find him underground uh, randomly in the cavern layer. He's actually very rare, so I'm not going to show you that one, but the Skeleton Merchant uh, will sell you yo-yo and mining accessories, basically. Um, among other, a few other things, it's based on the lunar cycle, so it does help uh, if you have the tool to be able to tell the lunar cycle, but it's based on the lunar cycle what he sells. It's not random, actually. Um, so again, he will actually not show up on the life form analyzer. He's very hard uh, man to find, which is why I'm not showing you him particularly right now. Now, that all being said, there is one final NPC, and I had to build a house special for this one. I also had to change the date on my computer, because there is one last NPC that will only show up uh, on certain dates. It's between December 15th and 31st, specifically. And I don't think he's shown up yet. <laughs> I expected he was going to show up at 6.30 a.m. Let's just uh, check a couple things, and we'll cut right to that. And there he is. Comes only once a year, it's Santa Claus. So I did make a nice little Christmas themed house for him. And again, I'm not recording this actually in December, so I had to set the date. He will only appear between December 15th and 31st. You need to defeat the Frost Legion in order for Santa Claus to show up, uh, which you normally can only actually do uh, by getting a snow globe from presents that happened during the same time frame. So I'll just show you what one of those looks like. Um, I have a little Christmas stuff thing here. <laughs> it, there's a snow globe. So you'll need one of those. That summons the Frost Legion. Uh, you need to defeat the Frost Legion. And uh, I'm sure I had done that before in the same world. But uh, here we are. I had to do it again. And that's when Santa Claus finally showed up for me. So he will only be here between December 15th and 31st in game time. Uh, so I just set the date on my computer and that works too. But uh, the Frost Legion, not to be confused with the Frost Moon. The Frost Legion is the snowman army. The Frost Moon, of course, is a whole other thing with uh, Ever Scream and the Ice Queen and all that stuff. That's a different thing. You want the Frost Legion with the snowman. You got to beat that with the snow globe. And here comes Santa Claus, and he will sell uh, Christmas-themed furniture and vanity items. So here you go. There's the stuff he sells. And uh, yeah, that's all of them. So uh, I believe that's, uh, that's actually every NPC in the game. And I hope you enjoyed. Hope you liked the video. Hope you found it useful. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.